Achieving a desirable crop stand in no-till conditions can be challenging at times for producers. By evaluating their residue management techniques and seeding equipment, producers will likely see an improvement in crop yields. This video will identify strategies needed to properly place the crop seed in no-till conditions. Seeding equipment needs vary drastically between no-till and conventional tillage systems. However, optimum environmental conditions needed for proper seed growth and development remain the same regardless of the tillage system. Residue management needs to begin at harvest time of the previous year's crop. Large combines with wide heads, as now designed in most cases, cannot adequately spread straw and shaft the full width of the header with standard setups. A large part of the difficulties encountered when seeding in no-till systems can be traced directly to inadequate spreading of crop residues and chaff. Optional and aftermarket equipment is available to improve performance and it should be considered a necessity. Take time when setting the combine to assure that the straw chopper and chaff spreader are set correctly. It could save you substantial time, effort, money and problems later. Also increasing the cut height of the stubble or the use of a stripper header will reduce the amount of straw that will need to be spread. A heavy harrowing perpendicular to the direction of combining is the best alternative if straw spreading is less than ideal at harvest, such as with adverse wind conditions. But harrowing is a poor substitute for proper equipment on the combine. If harrowing is done soon after harvest, straw spread is better, but snow catch is decreased. In the spring, harrowing is ineffective because the straw has settled and it's difficult to move. The time to spread chaff is behind the combine with a chaff spreader because it's too fine to spread with other equipment. Now that we have discussed residue management, let's address proper seeding equipment that places seed in a no-till environment. It would be futile to attempt to discuss each type of seeder on the market and all the options available for each. No-till requires entirely different seeding equipment and methods than what were previously employed in conventional tillage or even minimum tillage systems. No-till seeding equipment must be able to handle wet soils, heavy residue, and soils that have structure, for example, soils no longer fluffed with tillage. This video focuses on no-till seeders and seeder attachments that place the seed securely into firm, moist soil and covers it with loose material. The firm, moist soil maximizes movement of water to the seed. Covering with loose soil prevents the seed zone from drying and allows the shoot to emerge with minimum mechanical resistance. Placing loose soil over the seed allows crops such as corn to place its growing point at the proper depth. These conditions need to be met independent of the tillage system. The equipment necessary to do this job in no-till is quite different than those used with conventional tillage. In conventional systems, one of the primary goals of tillage operations is to create conditions necessary for seed openers to work properly. This involves creating a seed bed which is firm and moist at desired seeding depth covered by a layer of dry, loose material. In no-till, the surface soil layer is always firm and can be quite moist to wet at times. If attempts are made to use the same seed opener designs as with conventional tillage, failure occurs for numerous reasons. The first failure occurs because these seed openers have trouble cutting or clearing the residue. Secondly, they will lack depth control since seeding depth was controlled in large part by secondary tillage. Thirdly, they will normally cause excessive disturbance when the soil is moist or wet because they were designed to operate in the dry soil layer. And finally, the packing mechanism of conventional seeders will overpack the soil on top of the seed, fail to press the seed into firm soil, compact the area to the side and below the seed, or leave the seed slot open. The type of failure which occurs depends on closing system design, soil type, and moisture conditions. All are due to the fact that these systems were designed to work where surface conditions are loose and dry, or at least loose. In evaluating no-till seeders, it is helpful to again review the requirements of the seed. Seeds need to be pressed into firm, moist soil at the proper depth and covered with loose material. Every no-till seeder must be able to do the following with minimal soil disturbance. Number one, cut and move residue when desired. Number two, open the seed furrow. Number three, meter the seed accurately and uniformly. Number four, maintain accurate depth. Number five, place the seed in the furrow. Number six, press the seed tightly into the bottom of the slot. And number seven, cover the seed with loose material. 
Hair pinning is a much greater problem when following small grains with another small grain or with a small seeded crop. In these heavy residue situations, it sometimes is advisable to straighten the straw or move some of it from the row area in front of the disc openers. This process is called residue managing. Commercially available attachments designed somewhat like small side delivery rake wheels have been available for row crop planters for a number of years. They are now being designed for use on drills as well, but are less effective due to the absence of a parallel linkage system on most drills. The philosophy behind these attachments is to move some of the residue from the row area without disturbing the soil. This allows disc openers to operate without hair pinning even under tough conditions. Starter fertilizer openers or coulters are sometimes used to cut the residue ahead of or at the same time residue managers move the residue from the row area. In many, if not most no-till conditions, fertilizer openers need to have a scraper wheel or a skid beside the disc blade to keep the soil from lifting or rooster tailing and balling up the seed opener's gauge wheels and or closing wheels with mud. I'm Leo Voidy. I farm at uh, Glenham, South Dakota. Uh, we farm about uh, 3,000 acres of diversified uh, small grain and row crop. Uh, the planter I'm sitting on here today is an old 7,000 uh, eight row, 30 inch uh, John Deere. Uh, it's been modified to, uh, to handle the no-till residue. Uh, up front we've got uh, single disc John Deere uh, fertilizer openers tend to, to uh, uh, cut the residue a little better than a double disc uh, opener and uh, disturb the soil less. They have a, a, wipe, a wiper wheel and a depth wheel that run along one side and uh, kind of hold the dirt back down and then keep the mud uh, from rolling up and, and mudding up the rest of the planter. Uh, they also, we kind of have them positioned so they're uh, two inches off to the side of our seed openers and they do actually cut the residue uh, ahead of uh, the um, Martin roll cleaners which are a, kind of a double uh, wheeled uh, type of affair that run right ahead of the, uh, the seed opening discs. Coulters are recommended only for use in sandy or lighter textured soils. This is due to their potential to throw mud and ball up the gauge wheels and or closing wheels in heavier textured soils. Select coulters that'll do the least amount of soil disturbance. Remember to set the coulter depth approximately one fourth inch shallower than desired seeding depth. This allows the seed openers to place the seed into firm, moist soil. Depending on row spacing, operators may choose to use a single residue manager versus the common paired residue managers used by the majority of no-tillers. Examples of single residue managers include the Groth and a residue manager fertilizer opener combination manufactured by Kinsey. Single wheel residue managers are also available from other companies. Some of the features on this particular machine are we have a Groff residue manager on the front. It's, uh, we're running a single wheel. Uh, the main reason we're doing that is because we're running 22 inch corn and uh, with that narrow row spacing we tend to plug up in between the rows if we run two. We started no-tailing about 10 years ago. Uh, we use this uh, machine to plant our corn, sunflowers, and occasionally edible beans. Um, what I like about it is the, uh, the depth control. I like the uh, combination fertilizer and uh, residue manager uh, because we are on 20 inch rows, so space and weight is a, is a big factor. Paired residue managers can be configured differently to match an operator's type of residue, amount of residue, orientation of residue, soil type, and soil moisture levels. The types of configurations are classified as being interlocked or offset. When an interlocked configuration is used, the residue managers need to be placed lower to ensure the wheels remain turning to remove the residue. However, too aggressive residue managing, such as moving the soil in addition to the residue, may lead to soil crusting and weed problems. It's recommended to cut the residue in front of or at the same time the residue is being moved. If residue managers are not working as desired, try changing their configuration. Regardless of residue manager type, it is recommended that residue managers, when used, move residue away from both the opener and the depth gauging wheel. Only moving residue away from the disc opener may cause the gauge wheels to falsely sense depth. 
Newly developed two-inch wide gauge wheels will allow single wheel residue managers to move the residue clear of the depth gauge wheels. This will be particularly useful on narrow row seeders where space and residue flow is a concern. Disc openers are preferred in no-till systems. If properly adjusted and maintained, they can cut unmoved residue and open a seed slot with minimum soil disturbance. There are three common disc type openers. A traditional double disc opener has both discs meeting at a common point. The offset double disc opener has one disc slightly in front of the other. And the single disc opener has only one disc and a seed placement boot. Hoe or shank type openers will not be discussed in this video. It is in the author's opinion that although hoe or shank type openers are cheap and simple, they have severe limitations such as they cause too much soil disturbance, have inadequate depth control, operate poorly in wet soil conditions, perform poorly in high residue conditions, and require more horsepower than disc type openers. Seed is metered in two ways by volume or by singulation. Most drills and air seeders meter crop seed by volume. Most row crop planters meter the seed by singulation, or in other words, count the seed one by one. Crops such as corn and sunflowers are especially sensitive to uniform seed spacing, and therefore yields are maximized by using a seeder equipped with a seed singulation metering device such as fingers, seed discs, or drums. It is not recommended to seed these sensitive crops with a seeder that meters by volume. Seed metering devices should be routinely inspected. Additionally, seed metering devices should be calibrated for seed size and planting speeds. Excellent depth control on a seeder is imperative for successful no-till. The parallel linkage system in conjunction with the seed opener's depth gauge wheels allows the seed opener, seed farmer, and closing system to maintain proper operational orientation while following the contour of the ground. Most inexperienced no-tillers underestimate the value of uniform stand establishment in terms of weed control benefits. Matching adequate down pressure to keep the seed openers from bouncing is essential in maintaining accurate depth. However, it is more common for no-tillers to use too much down pressure than not enough. Too much down pressure can cause sidewall compaction, resulting in poor seedling growth. Correct adjustment of down pressure cannot be overemphasized. A seed firmer positioned in the seed slot is used to press the seed into firm, moist soil at the bottom of the seed slot. Examples of seed firmers are a press wheel or a flexible finger or a tongue depressor such as a Keaton finger. This ensures proper seed to soil contact and stand uniformity. Adjustable pressure setting capability is desirable so little or no pressure is used when the seed bed is very wet. This prevents smearing, compaction, and balling up. On the back of the planter, we're running a uh, Keaton seed firmer. We dribble our starter fertilizer, eight gallons of 1034 with a little bit of zinc. Uh, we're dribbling that right in furrow with the seed. Uh, I like the system for the fact that it's simple. It seems like we're able to work in wetter conditions a lot of times. Press wheels designed to mold or pinch loose soil next to the seed in conventional seed beds do not work in no-till unless the soil has been disturbed sufficiently to allow them to work as designed. Even with high disturbance, they will overpack when the soil is moist or wet. Solid V-type closing wheels are designed to pack the soil at seed depth. Trying to use these as press and closing wheels in wet conditions leads to sidewall compaction. Most drills and planters are not equipped with proper closing mechanisms. Farmers and inventors are beginning to develop good solutions, so this is changing quickly. A vast improvement in this area has been the development of the star or spoked closing wheels. Examples of these include the May West Poly closing wheels and the Martin spading wheels. These are designed to chop the seeding trench sidewall and place the loose material over the seed. We plant our corn and our um Sunflowers with the 7200 John Deere planter. Behind it, we have a flexi coil air cart. The uh, fertilizer coulters on the planter are John Deere, um, Dawn trash whippers, and May West closing wheels. And this year, we are trying a new type of closing wheel, closing arm from uh, May West. It, uh, the wheels are angled slightly and further apart. Uh, it looks like it's working pretty good. It kind of puts a nice mound of loose dirt over the uh, seed trench. 
Currently, the star or spoked closing wheels perform best when they are placed number one at an angle and number two when the wheel is slightly towed out in front. As compared to the standard setup where the wheels are not towed out in front, therefore star or spoked closing wheels work well on the John Deere 750 opener and the new Case IH SDX no-till drill opener. The reason for this is the drill's closing wheel arm dictates adequate closing wheel camber. Manufacturers are beginning to modify planter opener tail pieces that allow closing wheels to be placed at different angles and degrees of camber so that seed can be covered with loose soil in various soil conditions. By examining these seven points, producers can monitor the performance of their seeding equipment. Producers should annually evaluate their residue management practices and seeding equipment as the first step in achieving maximum yields. It is obvious that selection of a seeding tool or tools becomes an individual choice based on climate, crops, and producer preferences. There may be several options that will work in each situation. Nothing beats running your plans past some experienced no-tillers with similar conditions to see what they think.